So the other day, when looking at how to use an inner join in a MySQL update statement, I shared the state of the database using the MySQL CLI or command line interface tool. And uh, what I did essentially was run some select statements and you can see that we output the uh, data from the resultant query using this sort of fixed width, fixed width ASCII art table. And um, this is really great for just copying and pasting into different contexts for sharing the data uh, for things in demos or, or other contexts. And I thought as a fun code kata, it'd be interesting to try and recreate this table printing or this uh, query serialization, if you will, in ColdFusion uh, or Lucy CFML. So let's take a look at how this might work. So if I jump over into the code, um, I have encapsulated my pretty printing into this query printer cold fusion component uh, so that I could have some helper methods and not litter the, uh, the page context too much. And you can see here, I'm generating my friends query, selecting star from friend, just as we do here at the MySQL CLI. And this can be called in a couple of ways. There's only a single public method to string and its simplest form is I just pass in the query object and I get back a string which you can see I'm outputting in pre here because that has a bunch of spaces uh, that need to be kept in place. Um, I could also say pass in a subset of column names to include in the output. Uh, I can even pass in a max value length number to truncate the column values in case maybe one of these catchphrases, for example, gets really long and I don't really uh, care to know 3000 characters of catchphrase. Um, and here you can see we're just going to output uh, the table using a variety of smaller, uh, ever decreasing truncation sizes. So let's jump over to the browser and just see what this is going to output. So here is the first call, the, the simple to string passing in just the query object. And you can see we get essentially exactly what we get in the CLI, right? Here's the ID name age catchphrase, ID name age catchphrase. Um, as I was writing this up, I did notice at the last moment that the numeric values are actually uh, right aligned, not left aligned within the column. Uh, I did not do that. You can see I'm keeping mine left aligned. I didn't notice that that was a thing until I actually was done and writing up this post. Um, but we can see also that uh, here I have my ID and name as the second call. And here you can see ID and name. And we can actually change the order if we wanted to. Like we could put age first and refresh, and there we get age. So it's not only using the names, it's using the order of the names in that column list. Let's take that back out. And then here are the uh, ever decreasing truncation values. Um, and you can see we're adding uh, an ellipse here on values that are getting truncated until you get to a truncation length which is smaller than that, which would allow for an ellipse, and there we just get hard truncation at the, at the length. All right, so Let's take a look and see how this works under the hood. Uh, like I said, I encapsulated all of this in a query printer cold fusion component so that I could break up the logic and have a bunch of helper methods. So let's take a look. So here is my two string method, and you can see it takes the query object, uh, the column names, which defaults to just the column array on the query itself. So by default, it'll output all of the columns uh, in the order provided by the array. And I don't actually know what the order is by default. Is it numeric? I mean, is it um, alphabetical? Well, clearly not alphabetical. Like maybe it's just the order that the query is written in. Who knows? Um, you can pass in the new line character. So you, the basically the end of each line, I have to add a line break. So you could pass in something that overrides. Like if you wanted character 13, the line return followed by character 10, the new line. Uh, and then of course the max value length, which shows the truncation. Um, and again, the reason I wanted to do this in a cold feature component was so that I could break it up into a bunch of helper methods so the actual algorithm itself is pretty simple. You can see we create a buffer here, just an array, and I'm doing the top rule, the headers, the mid rule, each row, and then the final rule, and then I'm just collapsing that down into a list. So the high level logic, super simple actually, uh, we're getting the max width of every column, we're creating the horizontal rule, we're serializing the headers, we're serializing the rows, and then we're collapsing the buffer into a single string. Um, and I'm not going to really bother going through most of these. Uh, they're all pretty simple. They're small and self-contained. Um, a lot of them using some sort of map to map either the column 
uh, values or the the uh, row values onto single values or onto other arrays, so on and so forth. Um, what I'm really loving though is just when I scroll through this code, I'm just loving the look and feel of Cold Fusion these days, maybe specifically a blue CCFML, though I think a lot of this carries over to Cold Fusion uh, as well, Adobe Cold Fusion. Um, it really, to me, Cold Fusion is like this beautiful compromise between the dynamic flexibility of JavaScript and the type safety of TypeScript. So uh, they're just, everything's converging on this uh, sort of beautiful syntax, in my opinion. So uh, anyway, just a fun code kata to sort of split up the week. Um, I've been feeling very distracted with all the coronavirus stuff, and, uh, and I thought this would be a fun little palate cleanser, if you will.